Hi, this is Sherry at Half Pine Homestead, and today we're going to show you how to make these garden barrels. Um, if you have seen our website at all, you know that we're really into doing a lot with a little. And this, in, in an area of about two feet by two feet, will let you plant over 50 plants. So um, some of the features are it holds 48 plants in the pockets on the sides. You can also plant on the top. This center tube here opens up and it's a place for composting worms. It has holes drilled in it so the worms can migrate through and help aerate your soil. You can harvest your compost down at the bottom. There's a plug that pulls out. There's also a drain down here for your wastewater and you can catch that and pour it on top to take advantage of the nutrients that wash out of the compost. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and show you each step of making these barrels. So the first step in making these garden barrels is to mark out where the slits are gonna go so we can make the pockets. This is just a standard 55 gallon plastic drum. This one had soap in it. Sometimes you can get them with syrup or other things. You do wanna make sure that it doesn't have anything toxic in it because it's gonna be hard to grow a garden in something that had herbicide. So do know, generally there's a label that says what's on there. Um, this one has had the top cut off. We did that with a sawzall. Um, I tried the jigsaw and the blade just wasn't long enough and the guides didn't let it get close enough. So if sometimes you can get the place that you purchase your barrel to cut them for you for an extra $5. If you're not handy with tools, that might be worth it. So because I knew I was going to do a bunch of these, I went ahead and made a template because I don't much care to measure and I don't like doing math, so I only had to do it once. And so what we'll do is put this in my pocket, go ahead and get this started. And I just used duct tape that has had some of the sticky taken off with my pants lint, so it won't tear the template. Two strips, top and bottom. And roll it around. Try and get it level. Now this is a very forgiving project, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection is not what we're looking for here. We're looking for utility. So, and I'm going to take the top and small gap here. So these pockets will be just this much wider than the others, but you really don't notice once the, you've done the forming. So the next thing I need is a black permanent marker. And you just fill in the holes. Now we will be offering plans that include this, if you don't want to do the math, this one has 48, but if you want less pockets and bigger plants, you can always leave rows off. So, I am going to finish all of these and show you the next step. So I finished marking my spots out and I've taken the tape off my stencil. And I'm just going to pull it off and roll this back up. again. So the next thing we need to do is to mark out our cutting lines. And so if you'll see on this pattern, there are two dots that are pretty far away and then two dots that are close together. And I use this plastic ruler that's flexible 
and so you want to mark between the two far apart dots because the two close together dots are going to be the spaces in between your pockets. So I just match up the dots. I guess I need to take the top off. And mark my cutting line. And again, this is not a project that requires surgical precision. So if something looks kind of different, just adjust. You're not going to be able to tell once we make the pockets unless it's a serious difference. So I'm going to finish this and we'll take you to the next step. So this is all traced out with all the cutting lines drawn. And the next step is to drill holes in each of these dots. The holes do two things. They give a place for the saw blade to go in. And they also kind of release some of the tension, so it makes making the pockets a little bit easier. Now, this is about a half inch drill bit, and it works well. Any size that will allow your saw blade to work in will be all right. And it's much easier to do this with the barrel laying flat. So, and you simply lay on each of these. And then you get to clean up all the little pieces of plastic everywhere. drilled in and there are 96 of them so this takes a little bit of time it's time to cut the slits in that will eventually become your pockets so once again this is easier to do with the barrel on its side and I just use a jigsaw with a regular multi-purpose blade and you're gonna wanna place the blade against where the line is follow your line. The bottom and the top markings are thicker plastic, so they're a little harder to push through, but I find the center ones much easier. And again, just follow your line. we get to the pocket making process. So I'm going to finish this up and then we'll show you how to make the pockets. Now that we have our slits cut, we're ready to make our pockets. And there are three tools that I use for this. Uh, I use a 2x4 that has the end cut at kind of a 45 degree angle to help it, easy, help it push in easier. I use a butter knife, sometimes. And then just a regular torch that you can get at Walmart for $10 or so. So I've drawn some lines to show kind of where I heat this. I don't generally do that when I'm working, but I thought it would be easier for you to see. So let's make the pocket. Now you want to keep your torch moving, but you don't want to move it too fast. So we're just going to move our torch. Inside that line that's drawn. As this heats up, you'll 
start to see some color changes. Um, it gets kind of almost translucent and waxy looking with these white ones. And you'll start to see the cracks sag a little bit. So I can start to see some color changes. starting to open up here. Again, you don't want to move it too fast, but you don't want it to stop either. Okay, so I think that's ready. I'm going to go ahead and shut off my torch. There's really no reason to hurry. Once it's hot, it takes a while to cool off. And so you push down and pop it up. And slide it in and then pull it up straight. And it'll wedge in there. So now the pocket is formed. You need to leave the 2x4 in there for 15 minutes or so. Making the pockets is the most time consuming part of this garden project. It, um, because you have to let it set for about 15 minutes before it's cool enough to pull it off. It would probably be more efficient if you did three or four at a time, so by the time you got done with the fourth one you could come back and pull the two by four and it would be cool. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool and I will do one more pocket so you guys can see. The first pocket has cooled and we've taken out the 2x4 and I'm going to do one more just for so you can see um, but I'm not going to put on the, I don't usually draw that so let's do a second one. Again you want to move it, keep it moving but don't move it too fast. See this ring here? You kind of want to make sure that you get it warm enough because the ring is a strong point. Watch for the color change. It gets a little waxy looking when it gets hot enough. Um, you'll see a definite color change in the area that you've been eating. And then you'll see that the slit kind of starts to sag open a little. Another thing you can do is to use a butter knife and just kind of poke it and see if it pushes easily and that'll tell you if it's ready. This also comes in handy. Occasionally these want to re-weld and it helps you kind of break that. So see if you push it now, it's ready. I'm going to shut off my torch. And once again, you don't really have to rush because it's going to take a while to cool off. So we're going to push it down, pull up, and slide. You do want to get as close to the center as you can, um, but if it's a little lopsided, it's not going to hurt anything. And then just wedge that in there, and once again, this needs to cool completely before you pull the 2x4 out or your slits are going to close again. So I'm going to finish this up and we will show you the next step.
I finally got all of the pockets put in this barrel. Um, because I tend to get sidetracked while it's cooling, it usually takes me a couple of days to get them all in. But it, like I said, if you did a few at a time and just stuck with it, it would probably go a lot faster. Now, we have a couple of things that we need to do to the bottom of this barrel before it's ready for the legs. The first thing we need to do is to drill a drain. And as you can see, there's a small low spot here that's in a circle. So I'm just gonna use that as my guide. And I use a 5 8 inch bit. It does, can be pretty much any size. The size isn't that ex important. And I am just going to drill a circle and then fill it in, sort of like a drain. That kind of kind of keeps the um, soil from filtering out, but at the same time, it lets the excess water drain out, so your lower plants won't get waterlogged. just continue on and fill that in. So I've drilled the bottom, we've got the drain all done, I've drilled the all the holes, and I've marked the bottom of this with a piece of the bell end of this Schedule 40 that I've cut off. And you just use it as a template and draw around it with a marker. The next thing to do to cut it out is you need to have a space for your saw blade. So I use my drill the same size that I used for this, and I just drill a couple of holes close together and then try and cut through them. You want to make sure that you stay inside the line that you've drawn so that your hole won't be too big. saw and you cut around the hole. It's difficult sometimes to stay in the circle part, so you may have to stop and back out and come back in. There's nothing wrong with that. This doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be approximate so your pipe won't slide down once we get the sleeve cover on. So I'm going to cut this. tube itself. This is a piece of 6 inch schedule 40 pipe. It's the heavy duty type and then we've glued a ring of lighter duty pipe on the outside of it to give it a stop when it's sitting in the barrel. The light duty pipe won't work with this test plug that we use for the bottom and as you can see when you tighten the swing nut it pushes this out and gives you a nice snug fit. But it's not affected by dirt, so when you take your compost out, and if you had a threaded fitting, you might not be able to get it back on. So that's why we chose this. The other thing that you need is just a regular 6 inch cap that goes on the top that keeps both insects and critters out and the rain. So those are some accessories. We do need to drill holes in this so that the water can drain out and push the nutrients from the worm compost into your garden barrel and also so that the worms can migrate back and forth and keep it aerated. It is possible to make these without the worm tube, but it seems like a waste to not um, have that extra fertility. So I just draw, I just tend to drill four sets of holes 
about six inches apart all the way up and I just start kind of at the edge of this one so and again I'm using a 5 8 inch 3 8 inch strip bit and but the size really doesn't make that much difference up my pipe. Once I get these, I'll turn it a quarter turn and do the same thing until I have four rows of holes. And I will do that and we'll be back to show you how to put the legs on. One of the last things you're going to do on your garden barrel is add the legs. Now these legs are available pre-cut and pre-drilled on our website and I've used the holes in this leg as a template to drill two holes in the bottom of my barrel. We're going to use two and a half inch long quarter inch round bolts and a washer each one and just sets washer on the inside and a nut. see there's a slot for a flathead screwdriver and then we're going to use a wrench that fits on the nut in the back. Just tighten these up. So we do, we put a leg every other, so the next leg would go here. I'm going to finish with these legs and we're almost this ready. This is the last step together. of our garden barrel and we're going to attach the worm tube and then you're going to fill that with soil right away to hold it still while it cures. So I just use a regular outdoor um, latex or silicone sealer, um, something that you'd use on siding or maybe windows. Have it cut quite large. You're going to want to put a lot of this on here. This doesn't have to be pretty. You just want it to seal all the holes. And if it leaks a little, there's not a big deal. to get this all the way around and you want to get it good and thick. That way any imperfections when you did your sawing will be hidden. So and then we're just going to slip that down. At this point it's really nice to have a helper because it's much easier to keep this straight when you're filling it with soil if there's someone to hold it. But if you don't have someone you can fill it yourself. It takes four full two cubic or two, yeah, two cubic foot um, bags of soil to fill this. You won't use it all right away. Keep what's left over because when you do your planting 
you're going to use that extra. So that is the construction of the garden barrel. Uh, keep an eye on out for a video on how to do a drip system for it and how to plant it. And we'll also do a video on adding the worms. So thank you for watching.